My gift is I can look at any business model and I can make it profitable. I can see I can see where the profit centers are. The strategy is business creates cash flow, cash flow investor creates wealth. Now there's different asset classes. Now before there was only really property. In one of the first ventures I did in real estate, I lost millions of pounds worth of property. But that person who I was with that I lost it with, right? He took it, but I gained something far more valuable, which was confidence. Mm. Failure is really a restart with intelligence. Yes. Every time there's a failure, there's also a lesson. Yes. Right? So when it's duality, right? Yes. Light and dark, hot and cold, it's duality. One can't exist without the other. If there's a young person who's watching, they've got $1,000 to their name. Yeah. What would you ask them to invest in in 2024? There's only three things you should invest in. Okay. Put your money in. What's going on, people? This is your boy, Michael O, your chief motivational officer. Listen, I am excited to bring you a brand new podcast, Moving Mountains, hosted by myself. Find me on Spotify, find us on iTunes, find us on YouTube. Connect with us, Moving Mountains Podcast. What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Moving Mountains Podcast. I am your host, Michael O. Guys, I appreciate the views. I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the listeners, both old and new. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Listen, Wherever you're listening, if you're listening on Apple, make sure you're leaving the you're leaving the reviews. If you're on YouTube, make sure you're you're subscribing, you're commenting. I am doing my best to bring you high quality guests, high quality profile guests with all the gems, with all the information, with all the knowledge to help you elevate your life. You know how we do on this podcast. And today, oh, I am super excited. I feel like I've been waiting for this for 10 years, I feel. <laughs> all right. I'll give you a bit of a background. So He's a, my, my, my guest today, he's a self-made millionaire who garnered his wealth originally through real estate and building several seven-figure businesses, one of which is publicly listed on the Vienna Stock Exchange. He's a coach, he's an investor, he's a speaker, he's a mentor, he's an author, and has been featured widely from Forbes to BBC to the Wall Street Journal to the Huffington Post to the Sunday Times, Fortune Magazine, you name it. This episode is essentially going to be a coaching session. Literally, John Lee, welcome to the Moving Mountains podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. So good to see you again Bro. after all these years. Oh, man, honestly, I, I, I feel like I've been waiting for this moment for a long time <laughs> because, you know, sometimes a lot of the times, and I feel like it's great to do feedback and um, to give the feedback because... When you're, a, when you're a teacher, when you're a speaker, when you're going around the world and you're speaking and you're teaching, it's great to get the crowd's reaction in the moment, mm. but sometimes to be actually be able to hear real life feedback and how it impacted other people's lives and help elevate them from one level to the other. I feel like that's what it's all about. And I can say that you have actually made one of those impacts in my life. Oh, I appreciate that. Do you know what I'm saying? It's so incredible to... <clears throat> to I, like, do you know when you see Dragon's Den yeah. and, the, and the investing company, but you right. never see what happens afterwards. Right, right. This is like, I get to see what happens afterwards. Literally. You know? And this is 10 years later. I'll tell you a story. So I think it was maybe 2014. Mm -hmm. I attended one of your seminars, right? Yeah. At the time I was living in a two bedroom, um, two bedroom apartment um, in Bromley. Um, and I had a little thing. My daughter was maybe two at the time. And I've been thinking, all right, cool. I want to move into a much bigger space. But what's the, what's the formula? So I'm sitting in one of your, I'm sitting in one of your seminars, right? I think it was in Hilton in the airport residential, near Heathrow or something, right? So I get this, um, I think you must have shared one of the, um, one of the principles or one of the tools or the techniques that you use to acquire property. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I went home that night. I went on to one of the areas that I'd been looking to move into was a little town in East Church in a place in, in a place called East Church in Kent. So they had all these five, six bedroom um, properties. They were absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I went home, I printed 50 sheets of paper, literally, which said on them, I am interested in buying your property, but I am ready to pay your mortgage right away. <laughs> literally. So I went, I went to the neighborhood the next day. And I started putting it through people's letterboxes. A couple of people run me off, um, but I was able to get a few in there. So I think that was maybe the Saturday that I'd done it. Mm. On the Tuesday, I get a call from one of the properties that I dropped. And the guy's like, I remember the guy's name very well, Nathan. He was like, yes, mate. Like I saw this in my letterbox. What's this about? I said, literally, I'm new to the area. I want to move into the area. I want to take over your, take over your mortgage payments. 
stay there for a while and then look at the possibility of having first dips, what you called lease options yeah. back then. Yeah. First dips on the property in, a, in about 18 to 24 month period. He's like, all right, cool, come over, let's have a chat. So we had a chat. Literally two months later, I moved into that property. That was my first. I, later, I went to buy that property two years later. Literally. Wow. Using the techniques that you guys. So do these work? <laughs> it does work. Of course it works. It does work. <laughs> no, honestly. But I think it's it was, for me, what, and I went on to acquire at least 10 properties using, <laughs> using that, which is insane. Because I think those times when I would hear you say that you have 200 properties, 300 properties, mm. or whatever it was, mm. it was mind-blowing. I'm like, how do these people just acquire, deposit down, do all of that? But obviously you started showing people the ways in which you were doing it. Creative it's, financing, brother. Bro, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. You wear many hats. If, if, what, what do you do? If, if you were to say, this is, this is what I do, what would, you, what would you describe yourself as right now? Well, people refer to me as the money mentor or, okay. the, or the millionaire mentor. Okay. I get called that out a lot. Okay. But ultimately, really, it's just kind of entrepreneur, yeah. investor, mentor. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, really what I do. Yeah. And so like, I guess my gift is I can look at any business model and I can make it profitable. I can see I can see where the profit centers are. Now, whether people choose to listen and take that advice like you did, I'm so happy for you, man. Like, yeah. like I love it. Like when I'm walking around, I fly around the world and people just randomly stop me. Oh, John, you know, I just I just want I just want you to know it's that incredible, isn't it? like I get stopped a lot in the streets, yeah. or like I'll be at dinner and someone's paid for my meal and oh thank you for all your content like, holy shit yeah like it, it and it's what i love about this is you're now paying it forward to the people yeah and that has always been my mission yeah is that you you help people and those people will help more people yeah and it creates this ripple effect yeah and i'm so i'm so glad you're doing this but this me. is this is this is what life is all about this is what the journey is all about isn't it let's go this i i know that you've been in business for over two decades or whatever it was <laughs> what i don't know is where you started Right. Because you have such an such a great entrepreneurial acumen, such a great entrepreneurial mindset. Mm. What was your first business? What was that first venture that got your feet wet into entrepreneurship? My first business was a tuck shop in my high school. I don't, think, okay. I don't think my parents know this. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know, my parents used to own a Chinese takeaway, right? <clears throat> so yes, these have like cans of coke, prawn crackers. <laughs> I'd be like going to school and like my mates, hey, what do you want? Oh, I want a can of coke. So I'd be collecting money from them, going to my like my parents, you know, yeah. Chinese takeaway loading my school bag up and going and selling it. So that was my tuck shop business. Wow. And then what was, what was your first limited company? What was the first company that you felt bona fide you as a, an entrepreneur and made you your first property? Property. property. property yeah. <clears throat> it was always property. Yeah. And I still buy property till today. Yeah. But it's not something that I'm, it's funny because you kind of move in phases. Yeah. You know, now yeah. it's kind of the, the strategy is business creates cash flow, cash flow investor creates wealth. But then I talk about now there's different asset classes. Now, before there was only really property yeah. and it was so easy. Like, do you know why I started investing in property? Because I didn't do well at school. I'm dyslexic, didn't get good grades. So I thought, what can someone who's not that smart or intelligent do? Anyone can buy a house. Okay. Right. So I, like, you don't have to be smart for that. You don't yeah. have, to, have to. And it sounds bad when I say it, but it's like, like if I can do it. Any, anyone can do it. Correct. They just need to follow the steps and take action. Correct. But the hardest part is taking action. The hardest part is taking action. That's where obviously a lot of people fail. All right. I, I like to talk about, obviously there's so many asset classes yeah. that, and I want to delve into that because that's where we are right now. Yes. But there are still people who are still hang on to the property stuff. Yeah. Right. In 2024, what would you say if somebody wanted to acquire a property portfolio? What if you wanted to, if you, there we go. If you were starting your property portfolio in 2024, how yeah. would you go about it today? So you mentioned I took a company public in 2019. Yeah. Like if I could turn back the time, I probably wouldn't have done that. Instead of spending 15 years with one company, I would have spent 15 years with 10 or a hundred companies making between one and 10 million. Okay. So the goal in today's market, and here's where I see the shift, Michael. I see that people, they don't really want a job but now they don't want a business. It's yeah. somewhere in between. Like when you came to my seminars many years ago, you just want to fucking make money. Yes. Make me money, make me money. Literally. Now it's like people don't want the money, want harmony. Harmony. I still want the money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm gonna but you. I agree. Yes. Right, let me ask you a question. Go on. Would you rather make a million dollars clean, no stress, have all the time in the world, complete flexibility, or make 10 million be stressed out of, like completely stressed, like working all the time, no time, no freedom. Which would you prefer? <sighs> right now, I'd say a million, no, no stress. But that's where people are going to now. But I did the, I did the 10 million with yeah. stress already. Right. But I feel like it's, it depends on where you are in your life. 
Yes, right? that's also true. So, so now, I'm, when I first attended your seminar, I was 24. Wow. I was 24. I was h- hungry as a motherfucker. I'm still <laughs> hungry, but now I've, I've seen some success, mm. right? I'm a little bit more relaxed and chilled in life now. Mm. I can and your re- father. And I'm a father, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I, wanna, I want more family time. Mm. I want, okay, now I'm at a stage in my life where I want the least amount of stress the slightest bit of stress. I don't care who you are. I'm blocking you straight away. I don't have time for it. I don't mm. have the capacity for it. Oh, do you want to exert that energy to people? Exactly. Right? Like, why? Like, like, life's stressful enough. Right. So, like, I find that when you start off, like, you want this young hustle, you make all this money. It's like, oh, shit, I don't want that anymore. I actually want peace. Yes. And then you pay for the money to pay the peace. Yes. You see? So it's like... It's, it's also lifting your standards, which is why now we're getting to longevity now, mm. like living longer, mm. like taking care of yourself. Like yeah. I see when I'm here in Dubai, like everyone looks amazing. Like right, you're right, in incredible right, shape, right, man. You've right. got big muscles <laughs> and you see everyone walking around. They're like, it's like something out of a like, bumping modeling agency yep, here or yep, something, yep, you know? Yep. So I see a lot of people now, their wealth is really their personal well-being, well, mental you know, health. We say health is new wealth, Yes, right? And, and that's the era in which I, I love the fact that the world is growing in the consciousness that it is in, at the moment. We are putting a lot of emphasis on health, even with tech companies, yeah. even with companies and industries that used to be really gruesome, right? They're introducing this ease into their, the way they do things now. It's all about conscious business at the moment. We want to yeah. make money, but we want to do business, but we want to do it for the greater good of all and in the, in the healthiest possible way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, when with I, impact. With impact. With impact. With impact. And I feel like you can be more impactful that way. Yeah. Right? Because I have found, so when I turned 30, I did a video. Mm. And in the video, I said 10 things that I wish I knew before I turned 30. Yeah. Right? And one of the things that I said when, in that video is that now looking back to my younger self, I'll tell him to chill a little bit more. Mm. Be relaxed a little bit more. That's Every, wisdom. That's wisdom That's talking. wisdom and experience, right? Yeah. Um, and, and obviously seeing some results because now I know that everything that you desire will happen. Everything that you want will happen. Mm. Spend less time stressing and chasing, more time meditating and being mindful, being in the creative, mm. uh, that, that mentally creative state. Because I realized that it's like this um, um, Bruce Lee, right? Yeah. They used to say that when he would throw a punch, he would only move his hand about an inch or two inches forward. Mm. But it, if you were sat in a chair in front of him, it could move you a couple of feet back mm. because of his chi, right? Yeah. Because of the energy behind what he's done. So it wasn't so much the punch, that was it. It was the energy behind the punch. Yeah. And now I'm at the place in my life where it's like, it's not so much about the activity and the actions that I take. It's about the energy behind the action, mm. the preconceived energies behind the action. So um, yeah, 100%, that's where we are right now. So in this new world, all these new asset classes, you're an investor, mm. what are you investing in right now? If there is a young, there's a young person who's watching, they've got thousand dollars to their name. Yeah. What would you ask them to invest in in 2024? There's only three things you should invest in. Okay. Put your money in. Number one is putting your money into yourself. Yes. Right? So you gotta invest in your education. You don't know what, like if you don't know what to do, how are you gonna do it? If you, if you don't even speak the language of the things that people do, like, like one thing I learned from my billionaire friends, hey bro, do a roll up. What the hell's a roll up? Oh, it's when you put a shell, you put all these companies together, you lift the valuation, then you exit. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, like, take, like, take, somebody take notes for that. <laughs> right? So you learn new okay. language. Then mm-hmm. I hear tokenization. What the fuck is tokenization? Tokenization is basically point systems that allow the consumer to basically have part ownership in that product or service. And I'm like, oh my God, so I'm learning all this new. So you got to invest in learning new things. Even to today, I have mentors and coaches in everything that I do. Absolutely. So always invest in yourself. Second thing is always invest in marketing, right? If you like, do you know how many people I come across? They're so, they, they're so, they, they, they want to hold on to the pennies. Yeah. Like penny wise, dollar foolish. Yeah. If you can look, You've been to Vegas before. You've been mm. to Vegas, right? You know those machines. What are they called? Like you, you pull the, the thing slot down. Machines. Slot machines, yes. right? You put money in, like a yeah. dollar. Yeah. You pull it down, and then two dollars come out. Yeah. So, if there's a machine like that exists, how much money would you put in? The question is, the answer well, should be all of it. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you? Well, that's exactly what paid marketing does. Mm. You put a million dollars in, you get three million out. Mm. That's how you got to look at it. Yeah. Right. But people look at it as 
as a cost. It's not a cost, it's an investment. Mm. So that's the second thing you're gonna invest in. Number three, invest in an awesome team. I am so blessed that I have an incredible team. They take care of me. They make my life a lot easier, although sometimes I make their life even harder. Mm. But pay for the talent, get the talent. Don't, don't, don't be cheap, right? Find the best people. And here's the thing. This is what all leaders understand. You hire people who are better than you. Yes. Right? Instead of always at oh, all, let's hire someone not as good as me. So I feel, feel threatened. Hire the best people. Right. right? Hire a, a players. And also the recruiting process. Get your team involved in the recruiting process. Because if you bring one bad apple into the team, it breaks the whole culture. Absolutely. So these are three things really you should always be putting your money into. And aside the things with like asset classes, like real estate, I mean, I talk real estate all the time, but what about digital assets? Yeah. Right? So, so what digital assets? So let's take a YouTube channel. Mm. I know people are building channels up and selling the channels. Right. So YouTube's now is, is not a social media. It's actually the biggest TV channel in the world. Correct. So when you look at YouTube, don't think of it as a social media. Think of it as a media company. Yeah. Right? For example, when you build your podcast up, Right, people will make. They probably have already made offers. I want to sponsor that podcast. Correct. I want to give you money for that. Correct. I don't even want to pay to get on the show. I want to do this. I have Correct. these mics or have these sofas. You Correct. get like you start building intrinsic value that people cannot see. So when I'm looking at like that's why you look at VC firms, like venture capital firms. Now they're not even investing in companies. They're investing in creators. Mm. They say I'll give you a million dollars and you give me five percent of everything you earn for the lifetime. Oof. Right. So like. Would you take that? Wouldn't create like creators for someone to just hand you a million dollars over. So that is an asset that people don't think about. Mm. There's actually a really good website called flipper.com, F L I P P A.com, right? Flipper. And you can build any content website and you can build traffic towards it and then people will buy it. They're listed there for 50 to 100,000 to half million to a million for sale. So websites, if, not just websites, SaaS, um, content sites, blogs social media accounts, everything. Crazy. So you can literally take your podcast and say, hey, these are my stats. I get this many views, this many subscribers, blah, 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 blah. Make me an offer. Yeah. And, and here's the interesting thing. So one of the things I'm investing now is things that have what we call a recurring revenue called ARR, annual recurring revenue. Mm. So anything that has a multiple of income that comes in on a regular basis has 10 times the value. So you look at a business that makes a million, right? You can only really sell it for 3 million. You have, a, you have a business that makes a million, but is recurring, it's worth 10 million now, mm. right? So actually anything that you sell, the effort that it takes you to sell something once and get paid once, the same effort for you to sell something once and get paid over and over again. Exactly. So why wouldn't you always do that and invest in that? Absolutely. Right? So there's a software company I invested in, right? It's called Score App. It's incredible. It's, it's actually a, a good friend of mine runs that and he... An amazing entrepreneur. It's called Score but, Up. Yeah, Score Up. Basically, it helps you generate high quality leads. It's amazing. Got it. So when you look at that, it's got thousands of thousands of thousands of members paying anything from thirty seven dollars to hundred dollars a month subscription. Correct. Right. So you've got all this income coming now. VC firms and all these firms are trying to throw him money. He doesn't even need the money. Yeah, I mean the subscription right. is paid for. Paid for. Correct. What needs to be done because it's recurring. Absolutely. I, I remember I was I was in Hong Kong giving a talk, and this guy's worth three hundred and fifty million. Mm. I'm backstage with him, and I say what's your secret? So what do you mean? Like, tell me your secret. How are you making 350 million? So, well, John, I invest in the ARR. That's how I understood this language. Got it. Annual recurring revenue. And he said, John, if you want to, if you make a million this year and next year you want to make 2 million, you have to work twice as hard. Next year you want to make 4 million, you have to work four times as hard. Your costs go up, your, your revenue goes up, but if yeah. it goes down, then you're stuck. Yeah. So he said that you need to find companies that can produce predictable income. Hmm. And if you can have that money coming over and over again. So anytime I see a company that is recurring, that they can put things together that produces money over, over and over and over again, I'll go, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put some money into that. And here's another thing. It's not even invest. People don't even want dumb money anymore, mm. right? Dumb money is, hey, I write a check, here you go. Yeah. And then now people go, and what else? Right. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll promote you to my 6 million followers. Yes, I'll open this yes, door to this person. Yes, yes. I'll advise on the company in exchange for equity. So that is the play we make today. Yeah. And this is when people ask me, John, what business should I invest in? Or what business should I start? Go in as an advisor, take a cut. I want to rewind. Simple, and right? And write everything down. <laughs> but it's brilliant. But you see, you've, you've always had what seems like these 
cutting edge ideas, right? You're, you're given all these new terminologies and the ARRs and all this stuff mm. like that, but it's, it's brilliant. It's, so we, we've been hearing about it, especially like some, one of the things that you wrote in your book, mm. which is that you should always, there's three types of income, there's active, there's passive and there's leveraging. Yeah. This is creating passive income because you don't have to actively work harder to be able to generate double the subscriptions you don't physically have to do that. Mm. The marketing and stuff can do that for you. Well, let we, me explain it to you this way. Go on. Let's say you have a business right now and let's say you want to make, let's say a hundred thousand comes in this month, right? right? Most businesses have to go out and sell more stuff yeah. to be able to generate that revenue, right? right. But if you've got a hundred grand coming in on subscription, right? And then the next month comes, bang, hundred grand comes in straight away. You can't even spend the money fast enough. That's, and also what that does is, it, and this is what I see a lot of, why do you think all the big streaming, um, streaming companies, software companies, even real physical products are all switching to subscription? Yeah. Because they know that what we call the LTV, lifetime value of a customer. When you start a business, you know exactly how much want someone's worth to you. Yeah. And then you know exactly how much money the company's going to make. Absolutely. And therefore you de-risk the entire thing. Absolutely. And, and when they make a subscription and it's five ninety nine a month and four ninety nine a month and nine ninety nine. You're not even thinking about it. Well, how many subscriptions have you got? You've been mean, you've been meaning to cancel. You still haven't. Honestly, <laughs> no. This is a legitimate, <laughs> legit, right? Literally, last last night I saw an email from this company, E Dreams. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. I have no idea when I signed up to it. But when I go into my bank statements, I've been paying every month for the last few years. I don't know what it is. Right. I don't know the login details to even go and cancel it. I still pay for Pure Gym. It's eighteen ninety nine. It's been coming out of my account for the last five, six, seven years. I don't even use it. I'm on David Lloyd. It's like, right, come on. Right. We need to do better. Yeah, we need yeah, to cancel yeah, yeah, our subscriptions. Yeah, we need to <laughs> I love it. I love the fact you talked about the marketing. Yeah. It, it, I love that you talk about it so simply. You simplify it. Mm. Um, I think one of the things I heard you talk about the free C's ones when it comes to branding and marketing. Yeah. I want you to delve a little bit deeper into that. Okay. So that falls into what we call the marketing quadrant, right? So marketing <laughs> quadrant is four ways to market. One is free organic marketing. So you don't pay for that. And that's how most people start Social off. media, right? Not even that. It's like you refer somebody else. I got that person for free. So that's kind of like organic. Right. Social media is currently the best way to do it yeah. because anyone can upload a video and get a million views, yeah. right? And you got the paid marketing. So you should take 30% of what you earn revenue yeah. and put that back into marketing. And then the third part is now you've got affiliates, right? So every company should have its own affiliate program. So anyone now can actually, even for this channel, have you heard of CPM marketing before? Yes. So cost per, cost, cost per, cost per million, yes, millions. Yeah. But did you know you could do a cost per millions on this show? Tell me. So imagine right now all the millions of views that you've got on this channel so far. Right. Imagine you put your own affiliate program at the bottom of this, right? Because right now when people share this channel, they don't get anything in return. Right. But you can pay them because you can calculate how much it costs. Let's say the channel on sponsorship earns X amount of money, right? right? You can calculate based on how many, how much videos that you create that how much one subscriber is worth to you because you can extrapolate it. Right. So then you go, okay, if it costs me $5 to get a subscriber, I'll pay people to get me subscribers. How do you do that? Right. You basically have some software, they share the link and the link is shared with your affiliate program. So when they share it, people sign up, they get paid. You know where they've come from that. So now okay. imagine you've got millions of people sharing your channel. Okay. It, 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 that's another hack to grow on social. Okay. So that's what we call the, the affiliate model. And the third way, this is something that my, my MD Dinah, she's incredible at this, partnerships. Partnerships. And that's how collaborations work as well. How I, my first million followers on Instagram grew from what we call collaboration posts. Mm. Like I didn't have that many followers. So I'm like, hey, Michael, can, can, can you, uh, your channel's about this. I can create a piece of content for you. So you'd have to create the content. And all you got to do is just post it. And if you post it, then all you got to do is tag me in the post. Right. That was in the olden days. And today you can do something on a collaboration post. Correct. So no doubt you'll edit this out, you'll post it and you'll hit, this, you got a tag button, you have a collaboration button. Correct. So the collaboration button will send a notification to me and my yeah. team will go approve and then it will show on both, on both pages. pages. So Correct. now you're getting double the following. Correct. So- so that's, again, collaborations, you know, is, people just think about competition. There's no competition anymore. Yes. Collaboration is the way to grow. So you, and now if you incorporate all four together, you have compound effect power. Yes. Right? So like one plus one does not equal two. One plus one equals 11. Plus another one is times 111. Mm. Plus another one is 1,011. Yeah. That's, that's how effect. the powers move. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's brilliant. 
Who are your mentors right now? Where are you getting your information by the day? Because yeah. you're at the cutting edge of technology where you're getting all this new information and going out there. Of course, you're a teacher, you're a speaker, you're out there, you're teaching, mm. you're pouring. So you have to be poured into. Mm. But how do you find those people who are pouring into you? But people ask me, so I don't think I've ever told this to anyone before. So mm. this is an exclusive for your channel. Go on. People say, John, like, you're so successful. What you do. Why do you still carry on flying around the world doing talks? Mm. First of all, I enjoy it. First of all, I like the message that one person can hear and it can change their life. Correct. But do you know when I'm in the green room, that's where all the magic happens. Right. Because I now get first access to all of the top speakers. Yeah. Right. We connect, yeah. we network. And then it's not only what happens in that event, it's what happens post event. Most of the deals are done out of the event. Yeah. For example, we had dinner yesterday with some big people here in Dubai. Yeah. And like literally I have a back to back podcast, right? Yeah. So now after this, I'm going to go back to the suite. They're setting yeah. up the suite right now. Yeah. We have another podcast there. Yeah. Right. So, but that came from someone who I'd met many years ago. In fact, another one of my students paid me 15,000 and he said, oh, John, I, I made this much money over the last 10 years now. <laughs> like, yeah. but imagine, so imagine if I didn't take that 15 grand and I said, you know what? I'll coach you for free. Just give me a percentage of what you earn. Yes. That's, That's the way to go, my 15K. friend. Easy. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like crypto alone, he did like 5 million. Right. You know? Right. right. <laughs> so, but it's getting people to think differently. Yeah. So where I get a lot of my information from is, and, and every year, mm. again, we run a mastermind in Bali. Right, but the why I do oh, I've that? I've got to come to that. Yeah, you you absolutely. Then, I need to get the information. To Bali, Bali is literally my. <laughs> it's like six hours flight from. I here. was meant to fly yeah. to Bali last week. Oh, to be there for two months. Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> but do you know the reason why we do that? One is every year we have our team retreats out there. Got it. Right. Two is our, our VIP students come out. But three, I invite all of the people I meet at all these events yeah. who I think are the top that I can learn from. I'll give an example: there's a guy called Ken Honda. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. Guy. One of the one of the most like this guy is so big in Japan. Yes. And then, the arigato, arigato, arigato money. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see him and he's like, he's wearing a hat, t-shirt. He's the most humble human being I have ever met. Yeah. And like, he taught me a very powerful lesson about money. Mm. So you, as an entrepreneur, you're going to make a lot of money, lose a lot of money. Mm. And there was something where I thought, okay, well, what happens if you lose money? Like, how should you treat that lesson? He said, don't worry when you lose money. So why? Because it goes into the heavenly um, escrow account. And what happens is when it goes into the heavenly escrow account, it will pay you out your dues when you're ready. And I said, I was in Singapore with him. And I was talking about this. And I was like, bro, I don't understand. <laughs> and he told me this story. So he had a friend who's like, had this factory making millions of dollars. His business partner screwed him in, in his factory. Mm. And then he's like, okay, I don't have any money. Like, like what should I do? And he said, don't worry about it. So he's lost all his money. And then he's, the company was about to go bankrupt. So out of the blue, the Japanese government called him and he said, oh, by the way, um, your factory, um, unfortunately, is in a location and we have to knock it down. He said, what, what do you mean knock my factory down? He's like, oh my God, all these things that's happening. Now you want to knock my factory down. Well, unfortunately, it's right in the middle of the path um, for our bullet train and we need to build a path. But don't worry, we're going to knock it down, but we're going to pay you 40 million for it. Sick. Sick. Right? All right. And it's interesting because I say to, I mean, my, my MD is kind of like, she's like the, she's like a magnet for like law of attraction. Anything we talk about just comes true. Anything like we were just talking about this over, over, over dinner just now. It's like, mm. we just talk about this happened. Why have all these things happened? Why have all these things happened in our life? So when you start, and I guess it sounds fluffy, but when you start to believe that stuff, it, the belief bleeds into your life. Yes. Let me go there a little bit more because I call myself the chief manifestation officer. Okay. Right? I, love, I, <laughs> I like that I, one. I love, yeah. love, love law of attraction. Okay. I feel like everything that I have created in, in my, everything that has come into my life, I created and brought into my life. Mm. I, I, every year I create a vision board and I go ahead, I go in my Photoshop and I design it now and I print out yeah. a big old poster and it's yeah. there in my bedroom so yeah. I can see it every day. It's on my phone. I can, I can see it. And over the years, I can just see the progression of life. And I'm, I'm even things that I have forgotten from my vision board from 2016. I'll tell you a story. And this yeah. is how powerful this stuff is. Yeah. Um, so in 20, 2015, I wanted a Porsche, right? I wanted a Porsche. And so I went, on, I went online and I saved a picture of a silver Porsche. It was a silver Porsche Panamera. Oh, I nice. was like, you know what? Yeah. 
I'm a new dad. I want to be hip. I want to be cool, sporty, yeah. but I still want to be family. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, let me go for a four door sports car. So I saved this picture on my phone. And, and in the beginning, I was like, I'm not quite sure if the finance company is going to do it, da, 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 whatever it was. Anyway, whatever. I had the phone every day. I'd look at it. I'd say, thank you. All right. Six weeks later, I had the car on my, in, in, my, uh, in my driveway. Now, this is where it gets crazy. The car, I bought a, a three-year-old um, Porsche Panamera at the time. Mm. And to the left rear side of it, there was a little scratch, a tiny, minute scratch. What's crazy is... I thought it was the same car. I swear to God. <laughs> the picture that I had saved on my phone yeah. had the same minor scratch in the same no place. Way. In the same bloody place. It gave me goosebumps when I, when I realized it. I was like, fuck, this thing is absolutely insane. People, people, people think it's woo-woo. But you see, I feel like... I understand that we are in a generation where people want practical tools, mm. but I don't feel like it gets any more practical than this. I don't say that sit there and meditate and, and think all day and write things down and not go out and take any action. Mm. I'm saying that this is the chi. This is the energy that fuels your action such that by the time you go out and you're taking action, everything has been divinely orchestrated by the universe where this um, Rubik's cube is now being magically put together such that your actions then produce this desired result. Well, think of us as human beings. Think of how incredible our body has been engineered. Right. Right. It can, it can get rid of toxins. It can turn food into energy. Like, yeah. like when you think about it, there's something out there greater than us. Right. Think about this for a second. When a baby is born and if you left a baby there, it could not take care of itself. Yes. So what happened when the first baby was born then? <laughs> Who took care of that first baby? <laughs> Correct. Right. And you Correct. think back, it's like, you can't explain some things. And yes. this is what entrepreneur, I used to say entrepreneurship is jumping off a cliff and building a plane on the way down. Fact. Right? That is one of them. Yeah. So I have this concept. It's called being, entrepreneurs are strategically random. Hmm. What do I mean by that? We do random shit, but at some point it all comes together. Agree? That's what Steve Jobs said, isn't it? He says, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking back. Hmm. Because in the moment when you're doing it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I dropped out of med school at 19 yeah. thinking, what the hell am I going to do with my life? My mom, listen, I'm African, right? Yeah. So it's like, a, it's, a tab it's a taboo, right? You you can be one of five things. You can be a lawyer, doctor, doctor. teacher, accountant, Ten. engineer, or yeah. a failure, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was now in the failure category. Looking back over the last six, and I've been working for myself since I was 19. Yeah. Um, had a TV show wasn't doing anything in terms of money to monetary, but it was on Sky TV. And then it wasn't until three years later when I wanted to get it syndicated globally, yeah. none of the major distributors would touch my show. Yeah. And so I picked up the phone and started calling broadcasters around the world. Um, at the end of, uh, after 90 days, I got my first yes in Barbados, yeah. then Jamaica, then the biggest network in Africa, um, Mnet picked up yeah. the show. By the end of 2012, my show was in 60 countries. Wow. Well, fast forward now, what I had now created is a distribution company. Mm. So now over the last 11 years, my job has been working with Lionsgate and Paramount and Universal. And I distribute all of their shows and movies outside of the US, Wow! right? I, I couldn't have thought of that. I didn't know there was such thing as a distribution company. Right, <laughs> you're learning new language. You, exactly. You, see? you right? see, when we learn a new language, like skill set, but you have to learn language. Yes. yes. Right? Like. Most people don't have the knowledge because not willing to learn it to be able to have the conversation with that yes, person. Yes, yes, yes. So the fact that you're, you're learning this stuff and you're doing it and you're implementing it and you're getting the experience, that's why you become successful. But you know, this is the thing. I speak to people. So when, when we sit here and we talk about this stuff on the podcast yeah. and stuff like that, right? We, we make it sound so, so easy because... It is easy. You just do it. So, <laughs> yes, just do, just it. do it. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. But I speak to people who just don't have the motivation, that don't have the the evidence. The evidence, mm. the evidence makes a difference. I, I love this um, quote by Alex Hormozzi. Yeah. I hope I can remember it. Yeah. He says the best way to be able to increase your confidence yeah. is to be able to have evidence yeah. <laughs> to be able to have the results because when you start getting the results, that builds your confidence. Yeah. When I was starting out and I was talking about law of attraction. I, I thought I thought I was crazy. Forgot yeah. what somebody else yeah. thought. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> like, what the hell has gotten into me? Yeah. Not until I started to see the results. Now I have a backlog. I have a track record of results where I know this stuff works. Mm. For somebody who is now looking to introduce mm. this into them into their lives, 
sometimes I speak to them and it's like, there's zero motivation. What do you say to somebody like that to bring them over to the other side? Well, you know, I got to a point in my life now where you only want to work with people who, who want to change. Oh. Right? Do you know, in, the, early, fact, in, you in, know? The, in the earlier days, I tried to convince and convert people. Yeah. And why am I exerting so much energy trying to convert someone yeah. where I can now just go to somebody who already has motivation and I can 10x them? Yes. Right? It's much more, like, I don't want to feel like I'm wasting time. Yes. Time is very finite. Yeah. You know, like once that time is gone, it's, it's gone forever. You know, you, like, like you won't get that back. So now this is why I do a lot of social, a lot of speaking because mm. it filters the people out yeah. and the ones that really want it come to me yeah. and they'll say, John, I, I heard your talk and I need some help on this. Can you give me some guidance? Sure, let's do this. Yeah. Right? Oh, John, yeah. you know, I've got this much money in the bank right now and inherited all this money. I don't know what to do with it. Like what, what, what investments do you think I should go into? Mm. So like when people want it, they want it. Yeah. Right. And you, you can inspire them to that, mm. but what's the point? Mentoring and coaching is someone who's walked down the, the road further than you, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And you can only open the door for them. They have to walk through it. Yes. You can't walk through, you can't do it for 100%. them. 100%. So 100%. honestly, for people who are unmotivated, I'm like, how badly do you want this? And if they hesitate, if they're like, uh, okay, you yeah, probably, you're not ready. It's, not, it's not for you. Yes. It's not I for agree. you. <laughs> Right? <laughs> when someone comes to me, John, I got this idea. I said, okay, tell me what is it? Okay, I can do this and do this. Okay, brilliant. here's what you do. Like, okay, but what if this happens? And they ask me questions. That's when I know they're engaged. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it feels like then at least that time I've spent with them is impactful. Yes. Right? And so I want to create more of that. Well, they, they say that when the student is ready, the teacher the will appear. The master will, yeah. The, the master, master will sure. appear. You yeah. know, you, you have to come to, you need to have your own come to Jesus moment by yourself yeah. and then i suppose you go out there and you look for the people and the elements to be able to take you to that next level so you're involved in a lot of web, web 3 which yeah. means you you're 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 a big believer in blockchain cryptocurrency where do you think blockchain cryptocurrency web 3 factors into where we're where the world is headed at the moment well we all know about fiat right so fiat currencies are you know they just Cash. the more yeah. you print more of it yeah. the, the less it's worth Correct. right so where does now people get confused with blockchain and they get confused with um, cryptocurrencies. They're two different things, really. Yes, it's a different yes. technology. It just happens to be the smart contracts that control Crypto. the cryptocurrencies, right? So let's look at currency as a as a tool, mm. right? So if I buy this bottle of water, all I'm getting is the water. Mm. That's all I'm getting. But what if I can buy the water, but I own some of the water, and I ask you to buy the water, and you buy the water, and then you share it to your channel and then thousands of people then buy the water but guess what they're not buying with fiat they're buying with your token and the more and it's like a share isn't it the yeah. more people that buy the share mm. the higher the price the share goes mm. so now we're starting to get community involved so I, one of the um social media platforms that i invest in is called we are eight right mm. and what it does is you get paid to watch ads i kid you not Right? There's a wallet on there now. So, you know, before you had to have a MetaMask and you had to, get, you know, bridge it out yeah, and then do all yeah, this nonsense yeah. with this key phrase. It's, just, it's like, it's confusing. It is confusing. It's so it, confusing. It's so advanced for the normal average right. person. Yeah, but yeah. now, all these credit card companies now and American Express, Visa, Mascot, yeah. they can see the potential. 100%. So, what do they do? They go, you know, you don't need MetaMask anymore. Here is a Visa card and just link your Coinbase to it. Correct. You pull money out and you spend money on, on the Visa. Yeah. Right, so, so, so I'm excited with that because it's not only just blockchain and AI and Web3, uh, web it's also artificial intelligence now. Mm -hmm. All that plays a part in the next evolution of where we're heading yeah. as entrepreneurs. Yeah. You know, now they're talking about unicorn companies. So a unicorn is defined as a company that's worth over a billion yeah. in valuation, yeah. but a unicorn is a one to three person company valued at a billion dollars. Wow, okay. One to three person company. Got it. Why? Because of technology and AI. Yes. So you have to play the part on what is the trend right now? And what can you see being the future? So what I see is that everyone will have their own currency. You will have your own currency. If I want to buy something from you, I cannot buy it using dirhams, pounds or dollars. You have to buy it under the Michael coin. Okay. Right? Or the entrepreneur podcast, co like okay. you'll have your own coin. Yes. So yes. if you look at, I invest in another platform called Playground. Playground does exactly that. They help creators create their own coin and token. 
So okay. you can literally yep. go I'm there now, creating create your community, my own coin. all your, and, yeah. and so here's another thing for you. So now we're moving from data economy, because data is a new currency, to now the attention economy. So YouTube and all these big social media platforms will be taken out with this new tech. How does it work? You get paid to consume content. So imagine right now I'm watching your show, but as I'm watching it, I'm making money as I'm watching it. Okay. Right? And you've got thousands of people that watch it. So what happens to your token price? If you issue a billion tokens at one cent and they go to one dollar, your, your net worth is increased by a hundred times. Correct. This is the next play. Oh. That's why I'm in this game. I freaking love it. I freaking <laughs> love it. Listen, I feel like I need to have you on here every six months. <laughs> Honestly, because you're full of gems. You're just full of all this incredible information. It's, it's amazing. I did say that this episode was going to be a masterclass. <laughs> literally. And literally, this is this is what I feel like has been done. I want to ask you this though, because I I I wanna I wanna I want some um prac I wanna know what you practically did. I know that entrepreneurship, I know that having a business is not all cookies and cream, right? Mm. You do have those days where it's like, okay, shit, today law of attraction seems to be broken, <laughs> <laughs> right? Where, yeah. where things aren't working the way it's supposed to, be, it's supposed to work. Yeah. What was that venture for you that turned, that failed, mm. right? We know that looking back, there's more to it, but that failed in that moment. And what did you do about it? You know, it's so funny. I just did a whole video on this on YouTube. It's called, it's, bas it's basically failure is really a restart with intelligence. Yes. That's really what it is. Yes. That's actually the title. I'm going to upload it soon. Sick. Right. Sick. But it talks about like every time there's a failure, there's also a lesson. Yes. Right. So when it's duality, right? Yes. Light and dark, hot and cold is duality. One can't exist without the other. Yes. So if something shit happens, something good's going to happen and, and vice versa. Correct. You're going to look out for this stuff. Correct. And they present themselves different all the time. Correct. So I remember my one of the first ventures I did in real estate, I lost millions of pounds worth of property. Mm. But that person who I was with that I lost it with, right? He took it, but I gained something far more valuable, which was confidence. Mm. Right, is actually the whole reason why I started speaking because he was he was he did public speaking. I was like, what is this public speaking thing? Yeah, and I saw him do it, and I saw how confident he was, how he was able to articulate, and I thought, wow, I could use some of that. Yeah. Then he introduced he introduced me to NLP, neuro linguistic programming. Yeah, and I started studying that, and it's like, wow, words have power. You never say you can't. You can say how can you? Yeah. but you change the meaning of of the words. So then I, I learned that. So every time I had these failures or restarts, there is a lesson that comes from it. And what I learned from that as well is the power of education. Because within six months, I rebuilt that multi-million pound property portfolio. Mm. Because I had the knowledge, I had the content, I had the skills. Absolutely. The skill sets. People say you need money to make do well in business. No, you need skills, my friend. Yeah. Skills. What are you actively learning today? Correct. Right? Do you know all the programmers right now that are learning Rust? So Rust is program programming for blockchain and things like that. Right, right, right. It's like you should be learning that stuff, man. Yeah. Right? You should be learning AI, yes. learning how to prompt it, prompt yes. engineering, prompt chaining. Right. Prompt chaining is when you can take all these AIs together and chain them together so they work on autopilot. Sick. Right? So now you've got the CMO, CFO, CTO, you have the CAIO. Right, right. That is what you need to be looking at and getting into. I'm actually doing a program now with Mind Valley. Yeah. Um, it's an AI program yeah, to become an AI ambassador. I don't mm. know where it's going to take me, but <laughs> I was like, you know what? I need to be keeping up with these new trends because I need to be learning a new skill. Even like know, Autopod, like Autopod, these podcasts that you put it into Autopod, bang, three camera setup, cuts it for you in five seconds. I should probably shouldn't say that because your editor's like, oh, oh my job. God. <laughs> like, Yo. Just use Autopod. Yes, I just should. Load your content, click a button, go and have a coffee, come back, it's all fully edited. And Autopod is a software? Yeah, you just upload the content My and it'll God. recognize your voice and cut to your camera it'll recognize my voice and now i'm talking for a little while it'll cut to your third shot it's amazing it's incredible yeah po uh, jo john you're <laughs> absolutely full of gems and full of information i feel like i've <laughs> <laughs> don't forget when you met me 10 years ago to now there's a lot of evolution it's a lot of evolution yeah you know we were talking about brick and mortar then now that's old school stuff old now. school stuff yeah you know you can even tokenize property now i wanted to talk to you about that right, right? because We'll, we'll talk about it because somebody came to me with an idea and yeah. they were like, look, Have you I want to create an NFT, yeah. you know, um, where we can own a piece of property. Yeah. Everybody could own a piece of the property. Yeah. And it's something that we're looking into right now. Okay. So us being property investors, we understand property, right? Mm. Look at the fundamentals of property. Mm. You want to buy a property in, in, in London now, like a flat I paid in London is like over a million for a flat. 700 square foot. Correct. Most people can't afford that. Right. Right. So 
what are people doing? They're renting. Yes. So what happens is they rent. Where's the rent going? It's going down the drain. Unless yeah. they're using lease options and advanced strategy, yeah. which most people don't understand. Don't, most people don't. Because do. they're not even willing to invest the time in to learn <laughs> this stuff. Here's what you can do. So years ago, I had this idea. I thought, hold on a second. Like if you own a lot of properties and they're paying you fiat money, that's not really going towards anything. But what if they were to pay me in my property coin, for example? And this is what Built did recently. They've got, they're valued at 3 billion now. They basically have the idea to turn rental into ownership on using tokenized um, tokens, basically. So imagine right now you're renting a property, but eventually you can own the property through token because everyone's renting that token. It's worth way more money. And therefore you start to appreciate that token. Okay. That's a different perspective. Different from, perspective. That's for the renters. From, yeah, so yeah, for yeah. the renters watching this, you, like, it's good news for you. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We can yeah. do this before. Yeah. Right now, let's, let's spin it the other way. Let's say right now you've got a piece of property. You want to buy a property in London, right? Everyone wants to get the property ladder in London, mm -hmm. but it's too expensive. Mm. But what if you could take one flat and you could split that into a thousand shares and let's say each person pays a thousand dollars per share, that's a million dollars. Yeah. Over time, property prices tend to go up in value. Correct. So now it goes to two million. Their 1,000 is doubled now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Using blockchain blockchain technology, you've got yeah. tier ones, you know, like like the Ethereum's, you've got the polygons that are building on, on, on top of these layer yes. ones. Yes. It only costs 250 grand to build your own layer one. Yes. Then you go to your community, say, community, put the money in. Now you've got community growth. Yes. Because this is something that I'm looking into seriously. So yes, let's have several conversations. <laughs> several co John, I could sit here and talk to you all day because you're full of gems. But you've got to promise me, you've got to come back in six months, okay. right? You've got to come back in six months because I'm sure with the evolution of technology, there's so much more that we can talk about six months from now. Oh yeah. Because there, there's, there's so much, there's so much. All of this stuff that you're sharing, are you... Are you talking about it on your YouTube channel at the moment? I know that you launched a new YouTube channel. Yeah, if I mean, if people just Google John Lee Success, yeah. they'll find my new channel. It's a brand new channel. Yeah. I've just changed the content I put on there. Yeah. And my old channel talks about all the content. It's got an order following, just, just does real estate. Yeah. I mean, if you're that, you can watch that stuff. Yeah. Um, they can head up to johnlee.com. Yeah. But if you just type in John Lee everywhere, I put a, yeah. do a lot of sort of um, virtual events as well. Yeah. And we do a lot of free events for people because we know that some people are going to listen Absolutely. and they're going to take action. Yes. And then when they become successful, they pay it forward to other I people. I took full advantage. I did all the webinars. <laughs> I did all the webinars. I attended quite a few of those seminars and yeah. I appreciate you for the work that you've been doing, honestly, because it does make a difference. It really does make a difference. Um, like I said, I'm living testament of that. And now we get to pay it forward. And I appreciate you for coming on the Moving Mountains podcast. You got to come back in, 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 in six months, right? 180 days. You got to come back. Guys, this has been a masterclass. I told you that it was going to be a coaching session and it was exactly that. It was my coaching session. <laughs> Welcome to my coaching session. I hope you enjoyed it. John, absolute pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks, guys. All new episodes drops every Monday, available on all platforms.